Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Many of you probably already know that a couple of weeks ago, On One Software released an update to their signature product, On One Photo Raw, specifically On One Photo Raw 2025. There are a ton of new features in this update. I contemplated doing a single video going over all of the new features, but instead I'm going to split this up into two videos. In today's video, I'm going to go over all of the new generative AI features found in this update. And in a few days, I'll do another video where I'll go over everything else. Now, the first new generative AI feature I want to talk about is called Generative Eraser. It's a great tool when you need to remove something that is larger than, say, like a piece of garbage on the beach or a sensor spot. Specifically, I have this image here, and let's just say I want to remove the man in the background. To get to this tool, you'll need to go to the Retouching Tool group. It's the third group of tools from the bottom on the left-hand side. Now, you're, it may not look like this because it will show you the last tool you used here, but just click on that third tool from the bottom so it's active, and then go up near the top, and you see it will fold down, and then you could go to this drop-down and pick the Genitive Eraser. And it's simply a brush. And by default, you'll be having a plus brush. So you'll be painting a mask over what you want removed. If you need to remove from the mask that you painted, you could use the erase brush. Or you could just hold the alt key in or the option key if you have a Mac. I'll hold that key in and it will toggle between the plus brush and the minus brush. Now, in this case, I haven't painted anything yet. So I need to use the plus brush. Now, it's important that you make sure that you paint the entire object you want removed. In this case, because it is a person, if I left part of them there, let's say I left a leg in or an arm in, it's going to think that I want a different person there. So it will regenerate a person. Now I want the entire person removed, so I need to make sure that I paint everything. The way I like to do it is I usually go around the perimeter first and fill in the middle. Now once you're satisfied that you painted properly, and don't worry if you overlap, like in this case, on her shoulder, it's not going to remove her shoulder. It's smart enough to know what to remove and what to leave. So paint there, then go back up towards the top till it folds down again and click the little green generate button. Now, once you do that, it will come up with this progress bar and it will remove whatever it is you painted. And for the most part, I found this to work very well. I will give you an example though where it might not work uh, that well. I'll show you that in a moment, but let it do its thing. Now, I do want to mention that it is doing all of the processing on the local machine. It's not sending anything up uh, to the cloud to do the removal. It's all being done here on my computer. I have uh, an iMac. It's probably about two and a half years old. In the description below this video, I'll have um, specs for my iMac so you can get an idea just by the speed of the, you know what it's, how fast it's going when I'm doing whatever I'm doing to give you an idea how powerful my iMac might be. Now, it's my understanding that all these generative tools work much better if you're using Apple's software or Apple Silicon, like the, the M3, M2 um, computers. Um, my MacBook Pro, which is about a year old, has like an M3 um, Pro or something like our M3 Max, I think it is, uh, processor. And I haven't tried it yet on my MacBook Pro, but I will someday. And when I do, I'll... I'll mention it in a future video if, if it is a lot better. Now, you do have the option to use the cloud to do the editing, and I'll talk about that more in a minute. So we're going to stay with working on our local machine. So you can see it did a great job. It removed uh, the person perfectly. Now, let's go on to another image, and just let me show you another example. I have this image here, and as you can see, there's a bird flying through the scene, and I'd like to remove the bird. So again, we're going to go to that same tool, the Generative Eraser, by going to the retouch, Retouching Tool group. Just make sure we're using that Generative Eraser. And again, I'll get a little smaller of a brush for this by hitting the left bracket key. As I mentioned, I like to go around the perimeter of whatever it is I'm um, removing. But just make sure you get everything. If I left a wing in there or anything like that, it's going to think that I want another bird generated. So just get everything. And when you're satisfied that you have it masked properly, click on that green Generate button. And again, it will come up with a progress bar. 
And in most cases, it works perfect um, really every single time. Now, if there is a problem, if it does come back and it's not working the way you want it, what you can do is undo it. I'll show you that in a moment. You can see here it looks okay. But if I say I didn't like that, it didn't do a good job. Now, there isn't like three options to choose from or anything like that. But what you can do is undo it by hitting Command or Control Z. Control if you have a Mac or a PC. Command if you have a Mac. And when you do that, you'll just get right back to where you were with your mask. And then you could click the green Generate button again, and it will do it again. So this is the way you would do it, is if it didn't give you a satisfactory result the first time. Just hit Command or Control Z to undo it, and it will come back with your mask. You could modify the mask if you need to by using the plus or minus brush uh, on it, and then just do it again. And again, it's you know depending on the speed of your machine, you may have to wait a while. Um, so again, now I know you can't hear it, but the fans on my iMac are going full bore right now. So this is you know graphics processor intensive, and it's going to just really uh, use every resource available on your computer to get the job done. It seems to be going a bit slower uh, this time than it did the previous time, but who knows what my computer might be doing in the background. So you can see it, it did a pretty good job. Now, I mentioned that there may be um, a situation where it will fail. Uh, specifically, uh, this case here, look at her hat. You can see that she's got these kind of frills on the edge of her hat. And then you have the man in the background. Let's just say I want to remove that guy from the background. Well, this is where it's going to have an issue. Um, and really, it, it did it every single time. So again, I'm going to go to the third tool from the top. Just going to go to that drop down, make sure that I am, in fact, using that generative eraser. And again, I'm just, I like to do the perimeter first. So I'll go around the outside of this person. Make sure that I get his arm here. And then his body in here. And then we'll go on the edge of where the woman is. Now, this is where it gets difficult because, like these frills here, how do I work with this? Well, I'll just do my best to try to get in between them and around them like that. I could, you know, I could get a smaller brush if I wanted to be really tedious about it. But in most, I messed around with this image a lot before I started the video, and I, I really never got a, a satisfactory result. No matter what size brush I used, how refined I tried to get, it just really couldn't handle something like this. So it does have its limitations. Now, I do want to mention, this is the first iteration of the tool. Um, you know, even when the generative AI tools came out in Photoshop, you know, the first crack at them, they didn't work maybe as well as you would ex or hope they would have worked. And they got better as they, you know, updated Photoshop. Same thing here. I, I anticipate, uh, you know, the people over at On One are very... Uh, attuned to improving things, even existing things. So I'm sure this will improve. So there's the mask I drew on the man. I'm going to go up here and click that green generate button and let it do its thing. And hopefully, maybe it'll work well, but I don't think so. Because as I mentioned, I didn't really get a satisfactory result uh, doing this. You can see it's going a little slower. Again, my the fans on my computer are just going full bore right now. Um, so if you have a newer computer and you do not have Intel silicon, you have something else generally, from what I understand, this will work better. And I did mention that you do have the option to use the cloud to do this. The cloud may be faster. Now, in this case, actually, this is the best result I ever got. It's still got these little issues of kind of haloing around her hat, but it is it is really the best result I ever got. So you can see it's it's okay maybe, but I could come in here maybe with um, the perfect eraser or something and try to improve around her hat, but it did almost perfectly acceptable, so I'm pleasantly surprised. But I did mention that you do have the option to use the cloud, and the cloud may give you better results and it may be faster, but there is a catch. Now, if you do want to use the cloud, what you could do is you could go up to the top here and you see this little gear click on the gear and you can see by default it's going to use local gen AI. That means it's using your computer for all of the work. If you want to use the cloud, go to the drop down and you'll see there's an option stability AI. Now to use stability AI, you need to go to the stability AI website, create an account, 
and buy credits. So it's not free. And every time you use it, you're going to use some of your credits. I've not done it. So I don't know how much it is. And I don't know how much it is like per use. It is something that I'm probably going to do down the line just so that I could do a video on it to show you how much it costs because I don't know how much it would cost per like removal to remove this guy. Uh, maybe it cost a few cents or maybe it cost a dollar. I have no clue. I haven't even gone to the Stability AI website yet, but I will do that in the near future. Uh, you could count on that, but there is that option there. If you have experience with the Stability AI website and you want to tell us how much it costs and the credits and so on, you know, let us know in the comments below. Now, I am going to undo this because I don't want to save that result. Matter of fact, I'm just going to hit Command Z a couple times or a few times to undo everything. So we'll just undo that. So that is the new uh, generative eraser. On the on the whole, it works pretty good. Now the next uh, new feature is this generative expand feature. And I've had mixed results with this. Sometimes it works perfectly, but then sometimes it fails miserably. This specific image, it worked perfectly. Like I, I did it, I did it like six times and it worked perfectly two times. It worked okay two times and it failed miserably two times. So I'm not sure what we're going to get here. So let's just say that I want to make the canvas bigger. So we're going to go to the crop tool. And then what we need to do is go over here where it says canvas extension. And we're going to change that from off to either local gen AI or stability AI. So I'm going to go to local gen AI. Now, I want to have this lower rule of thirds line directly on the horizon. So I need to expand it up and maybe to the left a little bit. So I'm going to uh, have the view smaller by hitting Command minus on my Mac. It's Control minus on a PC. We're going to grab this left top corner handle and just pull up. So I'm making the canvas bigger. And we're going to put that, as I mentioned, this rule of thirds line right on the horizon. And we have these blank pixels now, and this is where the local gen AI will come in. It's going to fill in those blank pixels. We're going to click the blue check mark, and then I'm going to wonder what we're going to get, because I mentioned that a third of the time it worked perfectly, a third of the time it worked okay, but then a third of the time it failed miserably. And hopefully this works, and I'll explain how it failed. Um, but let it do its thing. And this is a failed miserably. Uh, see... Whatever it did up here at the top, it has like jet skis in there or something. I don't know. Just failed miserably. And you can see over here, um, we have kind of this line. So it failed miserably. So you want to undo it. Hit Commander Control Z to undo it. And why don't we just try it again for fun? All right. So we'll go to the crop tool and we'll go to local gen AI. We'll hit Command minus. Go to the upper left handle and go up to the horizon like that. And then click the check mark. And let's just hope this works perfectly. But I don't know. When it failed for me uh, the two times before, it failed twice in a row. And then I actually had to close the uh, photo down, work on another photo. Then I tried it again, and then it worked. So I got a feeling that unless I close this down and work on another photo for a while and then come back to it, it's probably going to fail again. But we'll see. You never know. That's the thing with these new generative features is it gives you a different result every time, no matter what generative feature you use and pretty much any app you use. So it's not unique to um, on one photo raw. Now here's one that is, is to me, this is okay. This isn't maybe perfect, but it's okay. It has kind of a mountain back here and you can see it's a little kind of got this line here, but that actually isn't that bad because once I do editing and stuff, I'd probably put a, um, a vignette on it anyway. But this one works pretty good. Um, there was a couple that I said were um, were okay, and where where I thought they were kind of maybe failed a little bit is the clouds were jagged. The, where they extended the clouds didn't really match. You'd have to come in there then with another one of the retouching tools to kind of fix the clouds. But in this case, this worked pretty good. So that is kind of you know an issue. With any generative feature, though, is sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. All right, let's talk about another new feature, which actually for me worked perfectly every single time, no matter what image I uh, worked on. Uh, specifically, it is the ability to remove sensor spots with a single click. 
Now, this is saving this. Now, this is all non-destructive. Everything I've showed you is non-destructive. You can see the original image is here. And then the down here, we have hiltonheadisland.onphoto. So this is an on-photo image, so it's non-destructive. Here's the image where I removed the guy who was in like the chaise lounge behind the woman. You could see that, and there's another version of it there. Those are both on one photos. Here's the one with the two birds where I removed the bird flying through the frame. You could see that it is totally non-destructive. The original images are untouched. Now, let's go to this image. Um, I've used this image a lot whenever I wanted to demonstrate how to remove sensor spots. And I always mention these actually aren't sensor spots. Uh, these are water drops. I was doing a long exposure. I had an ND filter on my camera lens. I forgot how long this was. It was at least 30 seconds, though. And it was a very windy day, and some of the water was getting sprayed onto the camera. And these are actually water drops that were on the ND filter. Now, to get to this new um, single-click sensor spot removal tool, you again will go to the retouching tool group. Again, it's the third tool from the bottom, no matter what is shown there. And then go up towards the top. When it folds down, go to the drop-down. And you're going to want to go to Perfect Eraser. When you go to Perfect Eraser, you'll see there's two things here. There is remove dust and reduce power lines. I'm going to show you reduce power lines in a moment. But remove dust, as I mentioned, it worked perfectly every single time. Just click on it, and it may take a second or three, but it will remove all the sensor spots. And I found, I did a couple other images too beside this one, and it worked fine every time. I don't have a lot of images that have sensor dust because I am rather fastidious when it comes to my camera sensor, making sure it's clean. So I usually don't have images with dust on them. Now, it did leave one over here this time, but you could come in with the perfect eraser and click on anything that it missed. So it missed that one. It missed one in the water here. But it's still a lot faster than if I went through all of these one by one and missed one here. So a couple in the water, one in the sky, um, but no big deal. But it does save a lot of time. Now, the rule power lines is, um, is a tool that will give you mixed results. Let's go back to the browse module. Let's go to an image somewhere that I have here. I actually had to pause the recording because I forgot to put the images in the folder for the remove power line feature. So there's a few different images. We'll go to this one first. Uh, you can see here that there are a couple power lines going through the frame. In this instance where the power lines are kind of like isolated against the sky, I found that this new uh, remove power line or reduce power line feature, it's actually called reduce power line, um, works perfectly. And again, it is in the perfect eraser tool. So go to the retouching tool group. And when you fold up here, make sure that you're using the perfect eraser. And then you'll see right here is reduce power lines. So if you click on it, it will automatically find the power lines in the scene and it will remove them. Now, in this case, as I mentioned, when the power lines are pretty isolated against the sky, there's not anything complicated behind the power lines or anything in front of the power line that you might have to worry about. It works perfectly every single time. But there are some instances where it will fail, and I'll show you those instances as well, because I want to give you a fair, complete look at these new features. I don't want you to buy on one photo raw on my recommendation and then it doesn't work the way it works for me when i'm showing you these new features i want you to know everything about it the good and the bad now you can see in this case this is good it worked great so we'll go back to the browse module and now we'll go to this image now this is where it's getting a little more difficult uh, we have some trees behind some of the power lines um here it may not work as well and again because it's generative it's a generative feature. Um, results are very, you may try it once and it will work perfectly, then try it like the next day and it fails miserably. So I'm not sure how it's going to do here. We're going to click on the reduce power lines and let it do its thing. Now, this does not have the option to send it up to the cloud. So this uh, reduce power lines and reduce dust, the only option you have is your own machine. So if you do find that you're using uh, the cloud, you know, you bought credits and all that stuff, and it does work significantly better for other things, you do not have the option to do it here. Now you can see that it removed the top power line pretty well, uh, but 
this bottom power line, it did not. So what you could do is you could use the perfect brush like I have active right now. So you could, or the perfect eraser, I'm sorry. And you could use this and you could try to remove the power line with this. Like that. It, after each brush stroke, uh, it will remove the power line. But again, when you have something a little more busy in the background like this tree, uh, it might not give you satisfactory results. You can see how it's kind of smudging it a little bit. Let it do its that. And over here, uh, see what it does. But see how it kind of destroying it. So I would have to do something here. I'd have to fix that with one of the other tools. Again, it would be under this retouch tool group. I could try, you know, the healing brush, or I could try maybe even the generative eraser. Uh, if I wanted, if I wanted to try the generative eraser and maybe I'd come in and, you know, try to fix all this in here and then fix over in here. And then there's a chunk of power line right here. You could try the generative eraser, click the, um, I accidentally clicked the blue check mark. That's not going to give me like the preview. It's better to click the green um, generate button because right now it's just going to finish. It's not going to give me the option to look at it. And then you can see it still didn't work that well. And uh, just to like maybe belabor, belabor the point, there we go, belabor the point. Let's go to another one where it's just not going to work. All right. Now, again, it's non destructive. So even though I accidentally saved that without, I didn't push that green generate button first, I accidentally click the blue check mark, it's a non photo image. So it's down here, it's still non destructive. The original image has the power lines in it. I don't have to worry about that. Now, let's go to this one. Uh, this, you can see, there's a, it's really busy behind these power lines, right? So again, we're going to go to the retouching tool group. We'll come up here. We'll make sure that we're in the perfect eraser section and we'll click on reduce power lines. And it's, I've tried this a number of times. It's never given me satisfactory results. So again, this is the first reiteration of this tool. I'm sure it will improve with future updates. Um, in this specific case, um, it's still not working perfectly. But if you do need to reduce a power line and you do have, again, that power line is isolated against the sky, it'll work perfectly. You can see here it, it has still some remnants of power line up in here. But I think that's no big deal. I mean, I could remove those with other tools. But where it is an issue, if I zoom in, uh, like on this building here, you could see how it's all smeared and smudged. So it didn't work well there. So again, this is the first video of two videos where I'm going to be going over all the new features found in On One Photo Raw 2025. These were the generative features. And again, I just going to mention that this is the first release of the generative features. I expect them to improve um, down the line, um, but they are what they are right now. And hopefully I gave you an honest um, look at them uh, so you can get an idea of what they can and cannot do. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.